These two engines may look different, but they have something in common. Their builders claim they're single stroke engines. Now I'm a mechanical engineer. And when I hear single stroke engine, I'm immediately filled with intrigue and skepticism at the same time. What do you mean single stroke? I mean, is this some kind of a new rotary engine that I haven't heard about before or just a bunch of marketing hype? Join me as we figure out the truth about how a one stroke engine actually works, what it does that normal engines can't, and most importantly, why on earth would anybody be spending millions of dollars of R&D on an internal combustion engine in a world about to transition to EVs? The answer will surprise you. Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky and this is 2 Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by Delete Me. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Why exactly is the idea of a one stroke or single stroke engine so weird? For starters, a single stroke engine is a type of internal combustion engine or ICE. At the most basic level, an internal combustion engine works by burning fuel inside a combustion chamber and turning that released energy into rotation. You can do this in a variety of ways, but the key to make any engine work continuously is for it to work in a cycle. In other words, the engine should be able to burn a little fuel, convert it to motion, and then reset itself so it can burn a little more fuel, rinse and repeat. For this to work, four things need to happen. The engine has to suck in air and fuel. It has to compress the mixture. Then it has to burn it to produce power. Then it has to discharge the exhaust gases to make room for a fresh intake of fuel air mixture. So you have intake, compression, power, and exhaust. In your typical gasoline car, these four stages are done in separate motions of the pistons or strokes. These are called four stroke engines and they are by far the most common. In some motorcycles and smaller gas engines like those on lawnmowers or leaf blowers, the intake and compression phase are both done in the same stroke and the power and exhaust phases are done on the next one. This is a two stroke engine. So a one stroke engine would be an engine where all four stages intake, compression, power and exhaust happen in one stroke of a piston. This is so weird that it took me a while to make any sense of it. If you don't find this strange, picture an engine as a swimmer and the strokes of the pistons are the thrust that the swimmer makes with his or her arms when he or she swims. A four stroke engine would be like a swimmer doing a breaststroke. He puts his head out of the water, breathes in, that's the intake. Then he goes underwater and sorts of curls up as he prepares to thrust forward. That would be the compression phase. Then he kicks the water and thrusts forward, extending his arms forward while he scoops up water and pushes it back. That's the power stroke. Finally, he releases the air through his nose before putting his head up again to start all over. A two-stroke engine would be more like a butterfly stroke, where a swimmer lunges out of the water, breathes in as he's in the air, and swings both his arms forward as he prepares to dive back into the water. Here he's combining the intake and compression phases in a single stroke. Once he's in the water, he pushes against it with both arms and legs and releases the air from his lungs at the same time, propelling him forward up out of the water, combining the power and exhaust phases in a single stroke and getting ready to start all over again. So I was thinking, what would a one stroke engine look like in this analogy? It would have to be a, a stroke where a swimmer could produce thrust and propel them forward even when resetting their arms forward to go again. It's kind of hard to visualize, but I think the swimming analogy really helps shed light on why a one stroke is perplexing. But still, Let's give these guys the benefit of the doubt and take a look at the engines they built, starting with N-Engine, the N-Engine E-Rex. The first thought in my mind is, who are these guys? Are they a legitimate company or just a bunch of snake oil salesmen? Because we've seen so many companies making claims that feel like pump and dump schemes. And this is what I found. N-Engine is a company based in Granada, Spain, that develops innovative engine technologies for various applications. It's actually a very small company with only nine members, from what I could tell. The company was founded in 2011 by Fernando Castaneras, Roberto Landaro, Anna Martin Moreno as the managing director and Juan Garrido as the investor and CTO. I couldn't really find very much about them. Juan Garrido doesn't have much of a LinkedIn profile, so I'm not even sure if he's an engineer. The VP Roberto Landaro, well, doesn't seem to have any background at all in mechanical engineering or the automotive industry for that matter. He does have 23 years of experience in, wait for it, bespoke seating projects, as in setting up chairs at large events. I'm guessing he's a really good businessman or something. The only one who really stood out to me was this guy, Angel Herrero, who works at InEngine as a simulation analytics engineer. It's a young company, but it's been running for 13 years, so they've had time to develop two flagship products, the E-Rex engine and the Rex B, which they claim to be patented, revolutionary, one-stroke 
engines. We live in a golden age of information access. It's what makes these videos possible, but it's a double-edged sword. Have you ever tried Googling yourself? I have, and it's seriously shocking. And why I signed up for our sponsor, Delete Me. It's crazy to me that collecting people's personal information online and selling it is a legit business, but here we are. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information that's being sold online. Just look at this. 53 data brokers had my data, and it's not just a one-time thing. Delete Me will stay vigilant and keep an eye on your data and remove it quarter after quarter as needed. I've been a member now for almost a year, and I just got my fourth quarterly report. And it's not just about you. How about your family members? I worry about my mom and dad, and Delete Me makes it easy to protect your entire family. Delete Me published a wire release on how high levels of political polarization have become the primary driver of online personal information risk for individuals, public institutions, or businesses something I've noticed whenever I research my videos. Have you ever heard of the expression, if something is free, then you're the product being sold? Well, take back your privacy online. Get that extra peace of mind of having experts on your side and save 20% on all plans with Delete Me and discount code Ricky. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Delete Me and you for supporting the show. They both work Similarly, so I'm just going to focus on the E-Rex, which is the most versatile of the two. So how does this engine work and why does the company say it's a one stroke engine? Here's an animation of the inside of the engine. There are a couple of things that stand out to me. First, it has four cylinders and eight pistons in an opposed piston design. This means that each cylinder has two pistons moving in opposite directions. Secondly, instead of being connected to a crankshaft by connecting rods, the pistons roll and push onto two identical swash plates the company calls cam tracks on either end of the engine. These are the two wavy discs here and rotate and transfer the piston motion to a common output shaft in the center. Third, it doesn't have valves for the intake and exhaust, but rather a set of intake and exhaust ports, something which is common in two stroke engines. This is really important, so keep this in mind. We'll Get back to that in a minute. To figure out what we get for this design, I looked at specs like power, torque, size, weight, and more. The E-Rex engine has several advantages over conventional engines. It's 55% smaller and 75% lighter than any four-stroke engine, thanks to a simple design that eliminates the need for crankshaft valves, camshafts, or cylinder heads. A 500cc E-Rex engine weighs only 84 pounds and can produce 120 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque. This works out to a specific weight of one 1.43 horsepower per pound or 2.35 kilowatts per kilogram. That's a lot. It's over three times more power dense than the Ford Mustang GT's 4.6 liter V8 engine and roughly in the same ballpark as Tesla Model Y's 3D1 electric motor, something no other ICE car I know can claim. It has low emissions and high efficiency because it uses direct injection, variable compression ratio, and can use supercharging or turbocharging. Also important to keep in mind for later in this video. Since it has two cam tracks, one on each end of the engine, it can produce power on both sides. So we could fit it in the middle of an all wheel drive system, for example, and power both sets of wheels with nothing but two transmissions. Also, thanks to its opposing piston design, the pistons move in equilibrium and cancel out each other's forces in all three planes. Not only that, but the fact that the motion of the pistons is controlled by the shape of the cam track and not by levers and a crankshaft mean that they can completely eliminate something called secondary imbalance, which is what makes most engines vibrate when revved up to high RPM. The result is the smoothest, quietest combustion engine I've ever seen in my life. As a funny anecdote, in-engine sent the E-Rex to the University of Valencia to get it tested on a thermal engine test stand, which is one of the most advanced in Spain. Juan Garrido, the engine's inventor, once said that the footage of the engine running was so quiet that investors didn't believe it was even running and that the video was fake, and I can see why. So it's a great engine, for sure. But the question remains, is it really a one-stroke engine? To find out, I slowed down the footage to look at how each piston did a full cycle. Let's focus on one cylinder with two pistons here. What do we see? This is the power stroke here, when the sparks go off and the gas ignites. As the pistons move outward and reach the full expansion, they uncover the exhaust port and the exhaust gases escape. So this is the exhaust phase, which is happening during the power stroke. According to an engine, the exhaust gases escape so quickly that they create a vacuum inside the chamber. This vacuum sucks in air at ambient pressure when the piston uncovers the intake port. And this really puzzled me. It just didn't really make that much sense that the fleeting air from the exhaust side would cause such a vacuum pressure as to suck in the entire cavity of air. I mean, you're going to get some air, but a full charge of air for the next compression cycle seemed 
a little optimistic, but I think I found the answer and I'll get back to that here in a minute. So after the intake of fresh air, fuel is injected into the chamber through direct injection. It mixes with the air as the piston rolls onto the next hill of the cam track and move toward each other, compressing the mixture. Once compressed, the spark plug ignites the gas and everything starts all over. Pretty simple and kind of ingenious. But wait a minute. The intake and compression happen after the power stroke, when the pistons are coming back toward each other. That's the second stroke. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. This is a textbook two-stroke cycle, not a one-stroke. So why does the company seem hell-bent on calling this a one-stroke engine, patented one-stroke engine? It really bothers me when companies make outlandish claims like this and don't live up to the hype, especially when they don't need to. So I looked into it, and turns out, to be fair, an engine did come clean when replying to a message on YouTube saying that in terms of engine cycle, which in my book is all that counts, this is a two-stroke engine. But it's not your typical two-stroke. I do get that. I mean, if only lawnmowers were as quiet and smooth as this little guy, right? The E-Rex has all the benefits of two-stroke engines, like producing power on every other stroke instead of every four strokes like in your gas car, resulting in higher power output than a four-stroke engine of the same size. But it doesn't have most of the drawbacks we typically associate with two-stroke engines, like high vibration and noise, toxic blue smoke, and that stench of unburnt fuel every time you turn it on. Because in a typical two-stroke engine, you have to mix oil in with the gasoline as you combust it, and that's why they're notoriously very dirty. It kind of makes sense now. An engine had this new engine design, and they clearly wanted to distance themselves from the people's perception of dirty two-stroke engines, right? Imagine trying to pitch to an investor that you have a two-stroke engine that kind of immediately puts you off on a bad footing. Close to 90% of all fine particulate emissions from gasoline-powered landscape maintenance equipment come from two-stroke engines, even though they only make up a small fraction of modern landscaping equipment. Their emissions are so bad that some studies have found that the pollution from running a two-stroke leaf blower for one hour is the equivalent of a Toyota Camry driving from LA to Denver. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but modern cars, really clean, catalytic converters, everything else compared to a dirty burn oil with their gasoline two-stroke. That's kind of insane, and it has to be why an engine wanted to distance themselves from two-stroke. But why call it a one-stroke? Why not just call it something else, like a, I don't know, enter marketing buzzword here? Well, it turns out, if you look at this animation, you'll notice that each pair of pistons does two full cycles per revolution. That's the same number of power strokes per revolution as a one-stroke engine would have. So, yay, two-stroke? That would be like me saying that, yes, this is only two stroke because I have to reset my arm to swim again. But if I have two arms, then I'm a one stroke because I'm producing power on every stroke. That is true. But if you broke it down by piston, right, it would still be, I'd have two two stroke pistons, if you will. Anyway, a little bit pedantic, but that's their logic. An engine, if I could get a chance to come out to your facilities, I'd love to check this engine out. I, I think we should just call it what it is. But it is interesting, and I'd love to see like long-term reliability of, of something like that. All right, so that isn't one stroke, but are there any real one-stroke engines out there? And as I started doing my research, rotary engines kept popping up for some reason. And a cool inverted rotary engine called liquid piston engines also came up. But after looking into how the cycles worked, they too turned out to not be single stroke engines. Sound off in the comments below if you want me to do a deep dive on liquid pistons or rotary engines or anything else. You guys know I, I'm good for it. Of all the designs I looked at, only one engine seemed to be a good fit for the one stroke engine, the Ampere Amp SS prototype. Let's see how it works. First you'll notice that this engine has only two cylinders in a boxer configuration connected to a central crankshaft. The levers in the crankshaft are also quite unique and designed to minimize vibration. But what makes this a single stroke engine is the piston and cylinder assembly. It's funny that this design is the opposite of in-engine's opposing piston design. Instead of having two pistons compressing against each other and moving in opposite directions, Ampere opted to flip both pistons and join them back to back, having them move together inside a dual chamber cylinder. I noticed two spark plugs and two sets of fuel lines on each cylinder. That's because both sides of the cylinders act as combustion chambers. The power stroke from one side of the piston compresses the fuel air mixture on the other side of the same piston. So you're getting both a power stroke and a compression stroke at the same time. Then the second side starts its power stroke, helping compress the fuel on the first side. The net effect is that you get one power stroke 
every single stroke of the piston. One pushing into the crankshaft, like when you put your weight on a bike pedal to push down, and one pulling on the crankshaft, like when you pull your pedal up while cycling. When you look at each side of the cylinder separately, you see a normal two-stroke cycle. But when you look at the piston as a whole, with both sides working, it really does appear to be a single stroke engine. Regardless of this, there's a clear difference between Ampere's engine and the E-Rex we talked about before. The E-Rex's compact size, high power to weight ratio, and inaudible humming sound make it an ideal candidate for an application that could change the EV industry. So going back to the E-Rex then, let's talk about some of the cons. All of engineering is a balancing of trade-offs, right? Trying to get more of what you want and minimizing what you don't. The first one is that the opposing piston design concentrates heat in the center of the engine. So it requires a very complex cooling and lubrication system. And then there's a problem with performance. Even though you get more power and much smoother operation, the swashplate design has a major flaw. It has a lower torque than other engines because it lacks a crankshaft, which acts as a lever multiplying the force of the pistons. They claim a torque of 180 foot pounds or 244 newton meters but they don't mention at what rpm i'd be willing to bet that the torque at low rpm is pretty low since they mounted an e-rex on a mazda miata and showed it running but they never show it taken off from a standstill and if marking videos don't show something it may be because it's not particularly fast one thing that also bothered me is the claim that the engine will work with ambient air when the footage of the miata clearly shows a supercharger installed on the engine so i guess the intake air is getting a bit more help going in but this leads me to my bigger point why bother with an internal combustion engine like why sink money into the r d for something that we know is going away. The world is going electric. Why bother developing a newer, better internal combustion engine? It's like someone trying to design a better and smoother horse carriage at the beginning of the 1920s when it was clear that automobiles were going to take over. And this gets to why it's called the E-Rex. You guys are probably familiar. E for electronic or electric and Rex for range extender. Their plan is to build this as a range extender option for EVs. Their premise is you'd be better off making three cars instead of one with these range extenders that are smooth, small, quiet, and with five or 10 gallons of gasoline, you could get that extra range when you need it. Most of the time, you never would. You wouldn't have to run it very often, but when you did, you'd have it. It's interesting. And it's one I go back and forth on. Seeing the Tesla Cybertruck with the range extender battery pack, which is not gasoline, it's just another battery. It made me think, yeah, it does kind of make sense. For example, one gallon of gasoline has over 30 kilowatt hours of energy storage on board in one gallon. That means a 10 gallon tank of gasoline, which weighs 60 pounds has 300 kilowatt hours of energy. Now, obviously the internal combustion engine is only about a third efficient, but even then that's a hundred kilowatt hours, the same as the Cybertruck kind of, which weighs a thousand pounds for the battery pack in just 60 pounds. Fuel, unfortunately, is really good at long range, high density storage. So does that make sense? What do you guys think? Sound off the comments below if you think a range extender plus EV is the right way to do this, right? One thing I will say is I will never buy a car again that has a gasoline engine driving the wheels. Gasoline engines are just way too slow, very low torque at low RPM, really you know bad for taking off, and they need transmissions that are constantly hunting gears. It's no good. After driving an electric car, I want a pure electric drivetrain. But would you be on board for a range extender option that just found its perfect RPM for the highest power output on the torque curve and just hit it? producing electricity as a generator to charge the battery pack back up, giving you that quick recharge time if you need it, all the range you want, all while still having all the benefits of electric motors for that super high speed, high performance, long lasting component. Sound off the comments below. I'm truly curious what you guys think. All right, so that's a quick look at the one stroke engine. Now, check out this video next. And until next week, I'm Rigo Tuba Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.